Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Welcome to Power Tip 16. In this Power Tip, we'll discuss snubbing the forward converter. This is a simplified schematic of a forward converter. Over here on the left, we have input voltage applied to the circuit, and it, it's applied to a transformer, and the transformer is switched by a transistor in the primary. In the secondary, we're showing an inductance in series with the transformer, and that's really a parasitic inductance. It's a leakage inductance of the transformer, and there may be some trace inductances also that you could lump in with this leakage inductance. And so the output of the, the transformer is rectified with D1 and D2 and applied to an output filter that is shown as L out, but it could be a lot more complicated than what I've shown. And so the way the circuit works is when the input voltage is applied and the transistor is on, you have a positive voltage out of the transformer um, that forward biases the output diode and you have a current path through D1 into the output inductor. The transistor turns off, the voltage on the transformer reverses, it reverses D1 and the transformer resets. And then at that time the output current is flowing through D2. And so the next time the power switch turns on, let, let's take a little bit more detailed look at it. So the power switch turns on, you have voltage on the transformer, but you have a freewheeling current in D2. And so that means that you'll have a voltage drop across the leakage inductance. And that voltage drop will cause current in the leakage inductance to increase, and that will start to decrease the current in the D2 output diode. And so the current in D1 ramps up, the current in D2 ramps down, and then it actually overshoots because you have to recover the, the charge in, in this diode. So the current in, in D2 reverses for a while, then the diode finally turns off, and at that time there's excess current in the leakage. That is, there's more current in the leakage inductance than there is in the output inductor. And so that current forces th this node up and rings with the output capacitance of the diode, and it creates quite a large voltage stress across this diode. And eventually this energy rings down and is dissipated in the parasitic resistances within the circuit. This is waveforms of what was going on in the previous circuit. Uh, we have three waveforms here. We have the drain of the power fat, we have D2 cathode voltage, and then we have D1 current. You can see that the power fat starts to turn on here, and eventually it is hard on at this point. You can see that the drain voltage does not rise instantaneously on the D2 diode. It, it's delayed from the time that the, the drain voltage has fallen on the power fat. And during that time, there's a lot of voltage across the leakage inductance, and that builds up current in the D1. And over here on the right, this is the average current in D1, and you can see that the current in D1 actually goes significantly past the average current. And this, this is excess energy into the circuit and will be dissipated by the parasitics within the circuit. So at this point, this is the point where D2 finally turns off and all this excess energy is ringing, and you can see the ringing in the cathode voltage waveform of D2. So to reduce that ringing takes four simple steps. So your first step is to measure the original ring frequency. Uh, in our previous slide, we'd look, you know, maybe from one peak to the other and figure out what the frequency of that ring is. And then we're going to take some capacitors and add them in parallel with the bottom diode. And once you have added enough capacitance to have the, the frequency, uh, you mean so you have four times the original capacitor. And knowing the two resonant frequencies and the amount of added capacitance that you put in there, you can calculate what the original capacitance was as well as the leakage inductance. And then once you know the leakage inductance and the original capacitance, you can calculate the characteristic impedance of the network too. 
And the, so the final thing is once you have the frequency, then you have to damp. And the way you damp is put a resistor in series with the added cap. And you want that resistor to be about the value of Z0. And then as a final step, you need to calculate the power in the resistor. So this is step two. We've taken our uh, ringing circuit from previous. Uh, we've added capacitance. And as you can see, we've had the ring frequency. And actually, we did ourselves a little bit of good because we reduced the magnitude of the ring also. Uh, there, there's the same amount of energy that is stored in the circuit, but there's a lot more capacitance on the node, and so that reduces the voltage. And then finally, we've taken a damping resistor and, and put it in series with the added cap. And you can see that we made significant improvements in the ring that we had in the circuit. We had 57 volts originally on the cathode of D2, and we've gotten it down to 36 volts. So we've gotten almost a 2 to 1 reduction in the voltage, and then we've also greatly decreased the amount of high frequency ring that's associated with it. Well, thank you for your attention. Please visit some of my other power tips. Take a look at Power Management Design Line and search on power tips, or click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thank you.